Hello YouTube. There's been a bit of a surge in popularity of cart-based multi-item sorters recently. With Cass's latest recategorizer and Lummy Thief's ultra-fast multi-item sorter V2, we're starting to see a healthy variety of cart-based designs. I figured it was time I threw my hat in the ring. So like Lummy, I teamed up with the ultimate cart guru himself, Inspector Talon. Talon and I go way back. We both played on Chaos when it was around, and Talon's provided input on the Miss V4 series. We actually once came really close to making a truly one-wide tileable multi-item sorter before we realized that sneaking was much more practical. Talon's been working exclusively with minecarts for a few years, working away at improving every aspect of cart-based storage. You'll definitely see his mark on this build. So let's take a look at the new Cart Miss. Here's what I wanted to accomplish with this design. Make it fast. Multi-item sorters can be slower than standard single item sorting. We can't have that here. Limit blocker items. Filling carts and chests with blocker items is tedious and requires additional wiring to handle. Let's try and cut that out. Cart eating. Let's make use of this mechanic and find the best way to queue up carts so we don't have any items despawning. Cart supply. Make sure to keep a healthy supply of carts so that we don't have to limit input too much. Keep it tileable realistically two wide tileable and try and configure it to be one wide tileable and keep it somewhat simple to build. Rails can be tricky and with some of the other objectives it's naturally going to be more complex than the standard miss but I don't want that to be a barrier for people. Let's start with what we know. Traditional cart based multi-item sorters rely on hopper minecarts having up to a full stack minus one of an item type and unique blockers in the remaining slots. The hopper minecarts are run directly under filter chests. And if the cart can pull an item in, the cart is rerouted into the slice, where it returns the filter item and moves on to be unloaded. This is called the whitelister. I got thinking about my miss systems. What if we could pull an item from the cart and check it against the set? This way, we wouldn't need blockers in the carts. We also wouldn't need this check to be at hopper speed because we just wouldn't be able to get the carts loaded and entered into the system that fast. After a few attempts, I ended up rewiring Miss V3 and came up with this. As the cart enters, an item is pulled out and inserted into the hopper below the chest. The hopper is then opened briefly to see if an item is matched, then the hopper below is opened to release the items, single item if no match, two items if matched, and at the same time, the cart is dropped below the bottom hopper to pick up the items and either moved along to the next slice, or if the signal is long enough due to a match, rerouted into the slice to return the item filter and sent to be unloaded. Some of our early attempts included the dropper towers we use in the standard miss. I really have to thank Talon for pushing to remove these droppers. Without them, the system becomes much, much more unload resistant and no longer requires blockers in the filter chests. Some quick Talon magic also helped us route the carts from slice to slice, using this amazing cart ladder that uses flowing waterlogged mangrove roots and the mechanism to let a matched cart through to be unloaded. This scaffolding trapdoor trick is just genius. Building this out and testing a few matches, we learned that the system can take in a cart every 32 game ticks. That's 16 times hopper speed. This might actually be the fastest, fully fleshed out sorter to date. Now for unloading. Talon shared another component he had developed, a cart queuing system that stacks and unstacks carts. By dropping carts onto this detector rail and moving them onto this adjacent detector rail with this piston, this trapdoor triggers, which separates the oldest cart from the rest. This is the exact same mechanic used in stack separation. Once a cart is separated, we send to the eater, returning the cart to the supply and pulling the items into this hopper where they get transferred into the collection chests. Once the hopper empties, it sends a signal to call for another cart, if one is present, and the cycle continues, all slices unloading in parallel. Let's take a more in-depth look at some of these components with Talon. One of the most useful tricks is single source flowing water. Water will try to flow down to the water below it, but it gets stopped by the lichen or other locks like uh, rails or even candles and things like that. What this allows for is the cart to get pushed by the water. So in the mangrove roots, you see you have the water in each source in the same configuration. And in the top here, it's a single flowing source. We use that a lot. Very interestingly, that also allows for some weird shenanigans like having the curved row right here to start the, the cart going 
and then also this water elevator um it goes at 10 blocks per second it allows for a lot of compacting for different cart stone applications if you want to go uh, learn more about it and have a more in-depth explanation for it um, i have a video in my cart stone guide waterlogged cart stone guide number five and the other interesting um cart hack that we are using is the weird hitbox mechanics of scaffolding scaffolding at the bottom will block the cart but if it is supported the cart gets allowed through so um you could kind of break this mechanic down into a few other sub mechanics that i can explain over here so the first one of which is um the cart being able to go through the bottom block so that's why it's going through the trap door here but it doesn't go through the top block and it gets stopped by this fence gate the cart doesn't get stopped by the top hit surface of trap doors or um, scaffolding because uh, for scaffolding it's a no collision side surface at the top and then for trap doors it's just small enough at the top where the cart can squeeze through but these are the only two blocks where this is possible while also being a support block so something like a slab won't work it's too thick so i could show that here so for the wacky rail placements uh in the actual storage system you'll want to try to get the curved rails on the sides first and then uh, put the top rail to slope this activator last it may also be helpful to leave this rail as you're building the bottom layer just so that whenever you're messing with the curved rail, you don't end up updating a bunch of activator rails and things like that. And then you could just remove this rail later on. Um, that may help. And for this one, you can set it with this. Now, um, it will try to connect. So you might want to first do this then break this rail as you're building slices onwards to avoid the directional issues. And um, from there, after you place this powered rail, you can just come right here and place this one here and then it'll slope up and then you're all good to go. This curved rail here, um, you're probably going to want to set this top rail first. Now this may be directional, You're gonna wanna this. And then there. So if this slips the other way, yeah. So you'll have to do something a little bit different in uh, each direction for this one. So once you get this curved rail here at the bottom, you'll have to, um, Get this sloped first, then remove that top rail, then place that and slope it up from the left mm, and make I sure see. that you don't uh, update this. And the other direction is a little bit easier because it, it wants to slope in the way that you want it, but uh, yeah, you gotta avoid that in this direction. But you kinda need to build it in a specific order. So um, one thing to keep in mind is if you want to avoid updating this rail here at the bottom, if you place the rails uh, perpendicular to uh, the rail that you don't want to connect to, mm -hmm. it won't uh, it won't connect down. Um, there's some more information about that in my rail behavior uh, guide video.
water will slow down the uh, amount of gravity the cart experiences. So on the right here, the cart won't make it all the way up to the top, but for the uh, left here, it will because it goes through this water and can make it just that little bit of extra distance. To be exact, it experiences half of the gravity. So you can actually make water power that propels it twice as high with just one source compared to if you were to just send it with, with just air here. And so we use that here because we can't actually waterlog this block, of course, because it would flow into the redstone dust, as well as soul sand does not impact waterlogged blocks, only water sources. For those two reasons, it's necessary to get this cart all the way up to the top. Cool. Very slick. So how do we handle input? Back to traditional cart-based sorters, the hopper minecarts typically pull their items directly from an input chest. Carts pull one item per game tick, and since they try and fill to a full stack, minus one, they're limiting their speed to 64 game tick intervals. I thought back to Cub Fan's Shibalba from Hermitcraft 7, which also uses my Miss V3. Maybe we could just throw the items on the ground to be picked up by carts. I found that by angling a cart beneath a low height block, with entities positioned in the middle of that block, the cart will pull exactly one entity at a time. This means we could clock the carts to match the 32 game tick throughput of the whitelisters, picking up only one stack at a time. A few protections put in place to lock the input before too many entities pile up and potentially despawn, and we're pretty much done. Just need a supply of carts, chest stacks, and the front end of the input, and we're done. There we have it. A 16 times hopper speed multi-item cart-based sorter. This thing is mesmerizing to watch. Let's have a look at it in action. I've also built out a one-wide tileable configuration using the same snaking technique seen in Miss V4.2 and V5. I've included a version with the entity input and a second setup that uses a more traditional interface. Also to note, I envision this as a first in a series for cart miss. Talon and I are continuing to work on improvements like compacting the whitelister, yeeting carts directly into a water stream, removing the always on clock, and a few other things we'll save for V2. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I really think this is a sorter unlike anything we've seen before. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks again, YouTube, and have a great day.